Hello, sewing people of the internet. In this video, I want to address a question that I've gotten frequently over the years. It's perhaps partly my own fault for not being more clear earlier in some of my older YouTube videos when I frankly didn't really know what I was talking about to the extent that I know what I'm talking about now. But uh, a lot of people say they want an industrial sewing machine when I think what they really mean is they want a walking foot industrial sewing machine. Uh, and I myself, when I first got my first industrial machine, made the mistake of buying a non-walking foot machine and realized that that really wasn't any better than a domestic machine. That's just a lot faster. So, and I want to clarify, there are some people for whom a non-walking foot industrial machine is exactly what you need. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying most of us want something that will feed heavier materials better and for that you need a walking foot machine. So if you like to sew the kinds of projects that I like to sew on this channel, backpacks, messenger bags, duffel bags, utility items made from things like 1000D Cordura or waxed canvas, using things like inner tubes, webbing, you know, heavier materials, then you want a machine like this one. This is a Conso 206 RB1 and uh, it's basically a medium duty walking foot industrial sewing machine. So the question I get from people is I'll get a message that says, hey, I'm looking for an industrial machine and I found this one in my area and it's at a great price. Is that a good machine? And my answer invariably is that's not a walking foot machine. So recently a viewer suggested that I make a video explaining how to identify a walking foot sewing machine. On the used market, many sellers don't specify that it's a walking foot, don't know if it's a walking foot or not, you know, somehow have acquired an industrial machine that they think is worth some money and they try to sell it. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to identify a walking foot machine just based on pictures that you see. I'm going to show you some examples of ads and we'll play a game of is it a walking foot or not. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you some of my favorite walking foot industrial sewing machines that I recommend. And then I'm going to ask for you to help. I'm going to pin a comment at the top of the comment section of this video. And what I want you to do is reply to that comment and give any recommendations you have for walking foot sewing machines, particularly ones that I didn't mention already in the video, that you either own or know of and can recommend to others as a good option to look for. So there's two real clues that I use to identify a walking foot sewing machine. It's possible that there are some walking foot sewing machines that don't show these uh, outward signs that I'm going to point out. As far as I know, all industrial walking foot machines are going to have these features, but um, you know they may not be completely universal, but this should get you a, a long way towards finding what you're looking for. The first and best way to identify a walking foot sewing machine, if you can get a good enough view of this in a picture on an ad, is you will notice that on a, on a standard non-walking foot machine, you'll have a needle bar that the needle is inserted into, and a presser foot bar that the presser foot is attached to, but on a walking foot submachine there are two presser foot bars. So you should see a total of three vertical bars at this end of the sewing machine. That's a very strong indicator that you have a walking foot sewing machine. The foot of a walking foot sewing machine is made up of two components. Um, you can refer to them as toes. There's an inner toe and an outer toe. Usually the outer toe has two toes sticking in front of the middle toe but sometimes that's not the case depending on what kind of foot is on the machine at the time. The other good indicator that you're dealing with a walking foot sewing machine is this mechanism on the back. You'll see two posts coming off the back of the machine and a shaft that runs between those posts and that connects a shaft inside the machine to some mechanism at the front of the machine that works the walking foot mechanism. This should not be present on a non-walking foot sewing machine. And in general, just from like a glance, most non-walking foot sewing machines uh, tend to have a slimmer profile in the arm. I assume that's just because of the, you know, there's more mechanics involved with a walking foot sewing machine, so this area just tends to be bigger. That's not a perfect uh, way to eliminate a machine. But it does kind of give you a hint if you're looking at a machine and it's really, really slim, it might not be, or if it's a bigger, beefier machine, it might be a walking foot machine. Okay, so let's take a look at some actual ads and see if you can figure out which ones are walking foot machines and which ones are not. 
Okay, so the first machine we're going to look at is a Conso, same brand as this one, but uh, in general it looks pretty similar to this machine. So looking at this picture, what do you think? Is this a walking foot machine or a non-walking foot machine? So yeah, this is a non-walking foot machine, and you can pretty easily tell by looking at the presser foot of this image, it's pretty clearly a single piece presser foot like you would find just on a standard domestic sewing machine. This particular machine is listed at $225. That's a reasonable price for a non-walking foot or drop feed industrial machine. If you need a machine like that, uh, that's not a bad deal. I wouldn't pay much more than that for one myself, but uh, it's not the kind of machine I would use a lot. So, Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one is a Juki, a very reputable brand among industrial and domestic machines as well. Uh, but very common in the industrial world, Jukis are ubiquitous. So the yeah, ad just says Juki Industrial Sewing Machine, $550. Now, I'll say right up front, $550 would be a pretty good price for a walking foot machine, and to me, a pretty high price for a non-walking foot machine. So what do we have here? The only picture I'm showing here is from the front, and without looking at anything else, I can tell you this is a non-walking foot machine. Um, even though it's got kind of a weird presser foot on it, you can pretty easily tell that there's uh, only two bars. Well, maybe it's not pretty easy. I can tell that there's only two vertical bars uh, and no mechanism on the back. Very slim arm. This is for sure a non-walking foot machine. Okay, so the next one, um, it's also a Juki, although it doesn't say that in the text of the ad. And um, really attractive price if this is a real seller. This is something I'm, I'm almost tempted by myself just to have to make videos with to demonstrate why I don't want a non-walking foot industrial machine. But if you were looking for a non-walking foot specifically, uh, that's a very attractive price if it works. So, uh, But I, it, I've already kind of given it away, but this is definitely a non-walking foot machine. And the angle of this picture makes it very easy to see that there's just the two uh, bar the presser foot bar and the needle bar. There's not that extra presser foot bar and again a very slim Throat that is consistent with it being a non-walking foot machine. Okay, so now we have a different machine entirely. This is a FOF and um, What do you think? If you guess that this is a walking foot machine you are correct. So uh, notice that the the throat section the arm of the machine is much much thicker and uh, you can't really see it that well, but it's uh, pretty clear that there is a walking foot smashed into that foam that uh, they're, they have in there. This machine is in quite poor condition. Uh, another picture in the ad, I'm not going to show it, but uh, the table is basically broken. $600 is a pretty attractive price for a walking foot machine, but I would be willing to bet that this machine is going to need some love to work at all, much less well. So... Uh, not sure I would be particularly attracted to this machine at that price, but it is in fact a walking foot machine. All right, next up we have a green Conso machine, a very attractive looking machine. I, I find these very cool looking. Uh, this machine has no reverse uh, and it's listed at $395. Now, uh, this, this video is not about pricing, but uh, something like a Singer 111 W155 or a Conso 225 walking foot industrial machine without reverse I would probably be looking in the three to four hundred dollar range if I were going to be buying another one. So three ninety five for this machine is a lot because it's not a walking foot machine. Uh, it's probably an excellent non walking foot industrial machine. It's probably very fast, but uh, for my purposes, it's not worth four hundred dollars. So, and again, the reason I know it's a non walking foot machine is just looking at the foot. Uh, it's quite obvious that that's just a regular presser foot. And again, the kind of thin uh, shape of the arm. Not a machine I would necessarily pay a lot of money for, but it's probably a good machine for what it is. All right, let's take a look at another one. And this one, the brand is Lieberso. That's a, uh, I've seen that brand around a couple times. I think they make cheap, cheaper or less expensive versions of other machines. So looking at this, walking foot or not a walking foot? Okay, so this is a trick question. And I threw this in here for a reason. This is a blind stitch machine. I don't even really know what you use a blind stitch machine for. Um, it's not something that I would ever use. I had one and gave it away. Uh, it came with a group of other machines that I bought. But uh, I'm assuming in apparel, this is something you would use uh, frequently. But 
Uh, I pointed out to say, I've, I've had people contact me in the past and say, look at this great price I found on this industrial sewing machine. Well, this is a, an industrial sewing machine. You can't do anything with it. You, you know, to the best of my knowledge, you couldn't make a bag with a blind stitch sewing machine. So um, if you are looking for something to use for a wide variety of uses to make projects with, this is not a machine for you. If you make a lot of something and need a specialized machine like a blind stitch machine, well then that's for you. But um, if you're just trying to get into sewing, this is not what you want at all. But unfortunately, sometimes people see industrial sewing machine and think, oh, well, I'll figure out how to use it and they buy it. So. All right, let's take a look at another Foff machine and uh, note how thin the profile of the arm is on this machine. And um, what do you think? So this is definitely a walking foot machine and it's a very, very good one. Uh, the, the 545, I think it started with a 145 and I think they might be up at 1545 or 1645 or something in the current models, I don't know. I, I've used 1145s a bit professionally. Uh, this is an excellent machine uh, and it's priced pretty high at $1,200. I, I probably wouldn't want to pay that for it unless I really needed it. But if you, if you zoom in on the front section of this machine, because it has a thinner arm, you can see over the arm and see those two posts with the shaft, even from in front of the machine. So it actually makes it easier to identify even though the uh, arm is, is a little bit thinner and that might confuse some people into thinking that it's not a walking foot machine, but definitely a walking foot machine, definitely a very good one. Okay, uh, this machine actually came up in a previous video talking about used sewing machine values. This is a Seiko and it's the same machine as my Conso 206. Uh, the Conso 206 RB1 was manufactured by Seiko. Uh, I don't know if they're exactly the same. In other words, there may be some internal differences that I'm not aware of or some quality differences, but they're basically the same machine. And uh, I'm not going to play the guessing game with you. Obviously, it's a walking foot sewing machine. Looking at that machine, it's the same as this. From the front, you can't see the mechanism behind because it has that bigger arm shape. Um, but if you zoom in, you can see the, the presser feet, uh, the multiple presser foot bars and the two piece presser foot. And just, you know, really honestly, you can look at that profile of that machine and know that that's a walking foot sewing machine. Uh, my understanding is I know Seiko and I know uh, Konso obviously, and I think Toyota, maybe Mitsubishi. Someone had told me brother makes a version of this machine. Um, I think like, companies like Taxo and some, some of the like kind of generic brands out there. Uh, everybody makes a version of this machine is basically my point. So if you see a machine that looks like that, you pretty much know it's a walking foot sewing machine. So. I do have a picture from that same ad from a different angle. This is something you want to think about if you're looking at online ads for a machine. You know, don't obviously stop at the first picture. Try to look at every angle that, that the seller has presented to you. But from this end angle looking this way, you can easily see this mechanism on the back. Uh, and that, that's a real good indication that it's a walking foot. Okay, so this is another Conso. And just from this picture, what do you think? So, yes, this is a walking foot sewing machine. Uh, obviously, very, very thick arm. Again, that's not necessarily in and of itself an indication, but that's a really good sign. And if you zoom in on the presser foot, you should see that multi-part presser foot that is indicative of a walking foot. But there's more to this story. This machine is a really heavy duty machine and uh, it's pretty high priced at $16.95, but it's kind of specialized. Uh, I think the stitch length on it is something like, two, you can get it to like two and a half stitches per inch or something. Don't quote me on that. It's a really, really big stitch length. So um, this machine maybe isn't one for everyone. If you find that a medium duty machine like this one isn't quite enough for you and you need that longer stitch length or you're selling thicker and thicker assemblies, maybe for like auto upholstery or something, then that might be a good machine. But if, if you were to come to me and say, hey, I wanna buy my first walking foot industrial sewing machine and I like to sew a wide variety of projects and make bags and items like that, I, I wouldn't recommend this as a first machine. Okay, so the next machine we're gonna look at is a Brother industrial machine. Brother makes really nice machines. Um, so taking a look at this one, big thick arm, what do you think? So 
This machine is a non-walking foot double needle machine. And uh, I would not recommend this machine to someone, again, looking for a machine for general use. Uh, if you're running an upholstery shop and you need to do a lot of French stitches, then that would be good. Uh, there are times when a double needle machine might be useful and you can rig a double needle machine to run single needle if you want to, but I don't know that I would recommend that as a you know, if you can only have one machine, unless you're really doing a lot of double needle stitching. Uh, but this machine is a pretty high speed machine, I believe, and not necessarily something that you would want to use for general purpose sewing. This next ad is for a Rex sewing machine, and uh, I'm showing this particular one because of the angle of the first photo in the ad. Uh, it does give you a very good indication very quickly, even though you can't really see the presser foot or anything. It's clearly not a walking foot sewing machine. Just because the thin arm shows, there's no other mechanism behind it. There's really no place for the walking foot mechanism to exist on this machine. So that's clearly a non-walking foot. And again, at $550, it's pretty high to me for a uh, non-walking foot industrial machine. So if you know anything about industrial sewing machines, this profile should be familiar to you. What do you think? Is this a walking foot machine? Uh, the answer very clearly is yes, this is a Singer 111W155. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the first walking foot industrial machine, but it's among the first and one of the most ubiquitous, and this design has been copied. Uh, Juki LU562 and 563 is basically this design. My Console 225 is a direct copy of this design. No reverse on this machine, but excellent machine uh, and you know, a good way to get into a walking foot sewing machine. Okay, so next up is another Juki, and uh, what do you think? It's pretty obvious to me, not a walking foot machine. And here we have another Foff machine. Now, this one's a bit tricky because uh, if you look carefully, the presser foot bar and the needle bar don't seem to be present. It seems like some parts have been removed from this machine or it's in the middle of being repaired or something. Um, this is in fact a walking foot sewing machine and the easiest way for me to tell, uh, besides just the general shape of it, is the presser foot that's laying in the bed of the machine is of a walking foot assembly and uh, just the way it inserts into the presser bar and stuff, it's pretty obvious that that's the case. $600 for a machine that looks like this I might have some serious concerns about, but uh, we'll follow that up with another FOF that looks very similar. The, the, arm style looks very similar. So if we zoom in and take a look, what do you think? And this is clearly not a walking foot machine, even though it looks very, very similar to the other Foff. Uh, the standard presser foot is a dead giveaway that this is just a, a drop feed or non walking foot machine. So I can't make out the brand on this machine. This might be a Foff and it might be a Juki. I'm not sure, but what do you think? Is this a walking foot machine? And the answer is yes, this is in fact a walking foot machine. And again, that mechanism on the back is visible over the hump of the machine. That helps. This is basically, if not, I'm pretty sure this is a FOF. If not, it's based on the Singer 111. Maybe based on the Singer 111, even if it is a FOF. But, uh, and, uh, you know, 540 bucks. I mean, it uh, has reverse, so... It's not a terrible deal uh, if it works, but I don't know a whole lot about the machine other than that picture. But So the next up is a Singer industrial machine, and uh, taking a look at it, what do you think? So this is another non-walking foot and double needle machine. Uh, Singer makes a walking foot machine that looks very similar to this one. Uh, Alexander Dyer did a video about that machine, and he spoke very favorably of it in that video. You should check that out. But... Um, this is a double needle machine and a non-walking foot. You know, I, I think you can get a double needle walking foot machine, but I don't, I don't really know for sure. I've never used one, but... And if we take a look at the end of the machine in another photo here, you can see that there's clearly just the one presser foot bar, so that makes it very easy to tell that this is not a walking foot. So, Hopefully with those examples, uh, it's given you some information that will help you when you're looking at Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever uh, and see what you think might be a machine you want to buy, but maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for. To emphasize, if you make the kind of things that I make using heavier materials and making assemblies that are thicker, you know, with 
water bottle pockets and backpack straps and things like that, then a walking foot machine will help you to feed those difficult, thick assemblies. Uh, a non-walking foot industrial machine is capable of performing the same tasks as a non-walking foot domestic machine. They can just do it a lot faster. Sometimes going faster is not good. So, so I just recommend that you be very conscious of what you're trying to get out of a machine and decide if you want a walking foot or a non-walking foot. But buying a non-walking foot industrial machine doesn't get you the performance of a walking foot machine. It's very, very different. Okay, so that said, I'm gonna give you a couple of recommendations of machines that I have used, that I like or own. And then I'm gonna ask for others who know of different machines to reply to the pinned comment underneath this video and let us know your recommendations. So my first recommendation is my Conso 206 RB1. Uh, I particularly like the RB1. Um, I don't remember when they changed from being made by Seiko in Japan to being made in China. I don't know if it's a, I think it might be the RB3, but don't quote me. Uh, but I know people who have used the RB3 and 4 and 5. I have a friend who owns a 3 uh, and has had no complaints. I've used an RB5 professionally. I had no complaints about that machine. Uh, the Conso 206 is a pretty ubiquitous machine, and I'm very, very happy with mine. Uh, I also have a Conso 225. You can also that that one has no reverse, but you can also get a 226. It's either a 226 or 226R or something like that uh, that does have reverse. It's a very capable machine. It has a smaller bobbin than the one that the Conso 206 uses. Another machine I recommend that people look for, I've used it professionally but have not owned one yet, um, is the Juki LU562 or 563, particularly the 563. The 562 uses, I think, the same bobbin as my 225, so not a very big bobbin, but the 563 uses a U-class bobbin, which is even bigger than the M-class bobbin that the Conso 206 uses. So, um, and using a bigger bobbin just means that if you're using thicker threads, you can put more thread on the bobbin and have to load bobbins less frequently. So it's particularly helpful if you use thicker threads, but either way, you just have less frequent bobbin changes. So uh, that's a really good machine. Juki's in general are very high quality. I'm not intimately familiar with all their different walking foot models, but the um, LU562 and 563 I have used and, and have liked. I've used FOF 1145s. I would say pretty much any of the FOF walking foot machines would be worth a look. Um, the German machines tend to be a little bit different. Sometimes uh, some of the other machines being kind of all copies of the same machines have a lot of parts interchangeability and the German machines not necessarily. So uh, sometimes parts availability may be more of a challenge with the German machines, but uh, Pfaff and Durkopp Adler, I've used both of those and they're excellent quality machines. And lastly, I have a Yamada cylinder arm machine. Uh, you know, Yamada is kind of a generic brand and just making versions of existing machines. But I've been happy with mine so far. I bought it used and it was already set up for the use that I needed it for. But uh, other than some user-induced issues, I've had no problems with that machine. My personal opinion is if you're looking for a used walking foot industrial sewing machine, brand isn't that important. If you find one that's in good working condition and you can test it out and it works, then you're probably going to be okay. Anyway, let me know by replying to the pinned comment what other machines that you recommend. Otherwise, if you have other questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. If you like this video, clicking like is a great thing to do. I don't really talk about this a lot, but YouTube has added a thanks button below, and that's a way that you can uh, throw me a couple of bucks if you like what I'm doing, but uh, I don't do Patreon or, or membership thing or anything. Uh, I don't know that I ever will, but, uh, and I'm not asking for anything, but if you've gotten value to this and it makes you feel better to, you know, let you know that I can go get a Coke later, then that would be awesome, uh, but no pressure. Uh, anyway, if, otherwise, if you like this, click like, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Oh yeah, and I forgot, I also have another channel where I post videos of me fishing and running and doing silly stuff outdoors. If you just love me, uh, make sure you check that channel out too. <laughs> Thanks. Here, I got him for you.
Nope, no, 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 no. Oh, sh no. All right, buddy. Uh, listen, no, don't swim down there. Oh, no. Go, buddy. Oops. Man, don't do that. Oh, you see that? He fell on the rocks and like swam down into the rocks. But I have to take this whole bank apart to get him out. Okay. Well, that was interesting. 